y'all, Scott here, and my review of E3 2017 is hot off the presses. So off the presses, in fact, that I had to resort to using this pre-made intro I made years ago back in 2013. Now, I hope that doesn't kill the immersion for you. Getting a review out of E3 2017 and this quickly required some setbacks. And now onto the segment where I disclose my opinion. I was disappointed in E3 2017. There was a lot riding on every company at E3 2017. Microsoft had to prove the worth of Project Scorpio, Sony had to prove that the aging PS4 could combat whatever Microsoft had to show, and Nintendo had to justify the millions of purchased Nintendo Switches, plus convince more people that it's totally worth it. We're going to be taking a look at the press conferences of E3 2017. I know that all the companies revealed some things before and after their showcases, but let's keep it simple and point and laugh at the big stuff. The first conference of E3 2017 was EA's on Saturday, June 10th. Doesn't matter what game they're selling here, I'm sold. Well, we start off with Madden 18. That's Madden like you've never seen it. Mm. Following Madden, they go straight into Battlefield 1, showing a montage of players online and detailing updates to the game. Next up is FIFA 18, and some blokes from a football show come on stage to promote it. Where do I pre-order? They then go over Need for Speed Payback, which looks pretty solid. But tell me, does it play as well as it looks? I can assure you that plays as well as it looks. Oh, thank God. Transitioning from that, they start talking about EA Originals, which is EA's way of contracting independent developers to create new original experiences. This time, they revealed the game A Way Out from the same developer of Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, and honestly, it looks really interesting, being a story-based co-op game played entirely in split-screen and graphically looking pretty nice. After that, they discuss the power of Project Scorpio and how it'll affect games like Madden, unveil a CG trailer for Bioware's new IP Anthem, talk about NBA Live 18, and then finish it off with a metric six and a half lifetimes worth of Star Wars Battlefront 2 footage. You know what's bad? I watched this press conference after I knew there was nothing for me in it. Overall, while EA's conference didn't personally speak to me really too awful much, it really wasn't supposed to. Now with a few companies this year opting for more of a quicker presentation heavily focused on pre-recorded video, it feels a bit jarring that EA wouldn't opt for this as well. Also, I really think trimming the fat and making it shorter would have made it more appealing to watch for somebody that missed the live broadcast such as myself. However, it wasn't bad, they showed what they had to, and it was pretty painless to watch. Continuing with my E3 press conference rating tradition, I give EA's press conference out of five knee slaps. The next company up is Microsoft on Sunday, June 11th. This year was a big one for Microsoft. They had to convince everybody that Project Scorpio was worth it. And did they do that? Nope. Starting off with a quick video that later reveals Project Scorpio's design, we see a few characters form, including the best Xbox character, Forza. And that is the design for Project Scorpio. It literally looks like a refined Xbox One S and nothing more. Then Phil Spencer comes on stage and reveals Scorpio's true name. There's no power greater than X. And today, we are pre proud to welcome the newest member of the Xbox family, fittingly named Xbox One X. Okay. I mean, I'm not crazy for it, but I don't think it's as bad as others make it out to be. Many compared it to the Wii U's name, and I think that's insulting to the Xbox One X. You see, people thought the Wii U was something like the One X, an upgrade. The Xbox One X isn't an entirely new console, simply a beefed up Xbox One, so I think the name works fine. Plus, if somebody buys an Xbox One S accidentally instead of a One X, it doesn't really matter unless you really care about your games looking better than great because they both play the same games perfectly. They start talking about the specs of this thing, and the audience members are losing it. All right, this kind of irked me. I understand the specs reveal being a big deal for a new computer, for example, but I never got why specs were such a big deal for consoles. Like, I get it. You want games to look the absolute best on your console, but you're more than likely not making games for this thing, so why do you care about the Xbox One X having a six teraflops GPU? As long as the specs are good enough to run the most demanding games on the planet, then why should it matter how many teraflops are lodged in this thing? Hey, Forza has a crossover with Master Chief. Fan service at its finest right here, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the 2018 Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Anybody else have the sudden urge to buy an Xbox One X? Metro Exodus is revealed and that gameplay was fake. The setting looked cool, but yeah, fake. Assassin's Creed Origins is up next, and as a not fan of the Assassin's Creed games, as in I haven't really played them, this looks pretty intriguing. I might. 
might give it a shot. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is revealed to be exclusive to the Xbox One. That's pretty cool, never mind, it's a launch exclusive. That kills a lot of my interest in playing it on the Xbox. Deep Rock Galactic, an interesting graphical style for sure. It's also only a launch exclusive, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. More guns though, after Metro and Battlegrounds, this is getting a little old. And now, State of Decay 2. I loved State of Decay on Xbox 360, so this is definitely on my radar. My god, this trailer was too long. I have a few problems with this trailer. State of Decay 2 isn't the prettiest game out there. Its animations and characters all have a solid amount of jank. That's fine though, as the game isn't really about the story or characters, more so on the survival and exploration aspects. The trailer gives off kind of a Days Gone Last of Us vibe, where they're trying to be super serious and it just doesn't work well when the game doesn't look like those games graphically. The game really isn't about story anyways, trim the trailer down to two minutes or use all this time for a gameplay demo. And look, more guns! For God's sake, Microsoft, we get it, the Second Amendment happened, it's cool, but get over it! I know all these games are totally different, but it's so many games in a row that have the same mechanic. And I know that makes me sound really anything that's not made by Nintendo is bullshit. E, but they should have shaken up the game trailer so then a string of games whose main mechanic isn't shooting doesn't happen. Whatever this game is, I couldn't care less. It doesn't have a live announcer screaming. I wanna play for the wounded warrior. She was Minecraft gets a handful of showtime. I'm not personally interested and I think this could have all been condensed into a short trailer, but instead, two trailers and a whole speaker. Dragon Ball Fighter Z looks really, really good. Like really, really, really good. I'm not a Dragon Ball guy, but this game looks perfect for what it is visually and it honestly looks really fun. Another launch exclusive. This is getting annoying considering how many actual exclusives have been shown off. Yeah, I got nothing. Wow, The Last Night looks gorgeous. I'm kind of getting sick of the whole pixel art style for indie games, but this game takes it in a new direction. Like, my god, it looks great. Reminds me of the game Flashback. Wait, just a moment. What was shown at the beginning of the trailer? Exclusive. Christ! Looks like Microsoft's getting artsy on us. All right, cool. Wait, what was at the beginning again? Exclusive. Code Vein, I totally forgot this was in the conference. I have no clue what I was doing during this portion, and thus, I got nothing. See if these gets an extended gameplay demo, and my god, it looks cool and really fun, turning a lot of pirate tropes into gameplay mechanics like riddles to find treasure and ship battles, but I really think they showed this game off too early. We've been seeing this game at E3 for years now. I liked the gameplay, but I thought it went on for too long. Exclusive. Alright, hate to break it to you Microsoft, but I don't think launch exclusives excite anybody. They're more so an annoyance to people on other platforms and to people on your platform. If they were interested in the game, they would have bought the game regardless of it being a launch exclusive or multi-platform. Tacoma, what the hell was that? No, seriously, I feel like indie game trailers at Microsoft press conferences do the worst job at telling you what their game is like. Like, remember the trailer for Inside last year? What was that? Hey, Conquer! <sighs> you cheekies! Well, here we have Super Lucky's Tale, perfect evidence that you don't have to be Nintendo to make a shitty Nintendo game. To be fair, it looks like it would be fun, but a bit generic. I'd be interested to pick it up on the cheap, but I'm in no way foaming at the mouth to play this game. It is nice to see Microsoft getting behind a decent looking 3D platformer, though. Cuphead, the coolest looking game to ever grace a video file. Crackdown 3 starring Terry Crews, Neato! We get a montage of smaller games, Ashen, Life is Strange Before the Storm, a gameplay demo for Shadow of War, a trailer for Ori and the Will of the Wisp, which is pretty banging, and... Today, I'm pleased to announce an exciting expansion to the program. Yes! This was amazing confirmation. I love the idea that the Xbox One will play all generations of Xbox, and the original Xbox has a killer library that I love to play again on a modern console. This was my favorite announcement of the show. I was so happy. Phil then reveals that the Xbox One X will be retailing for $499, and then we get a gameplay demo for Anthem. We have four more conferences to go over. That was a decent conference. My main problem was the pacing. It felt like too many similar games were lumped together, which made them all kind of blend in. Some trailers, especially for indie games, didn't give you any concrete information on what the game is about, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't bored multiple times during the conference. Just some gameplay demos and trailers dragged on for too long. 
That ended up having the conference be the longest of the bunch, running over 90 minutes during an E3 where most conferences were under an hour long. Also, Microsoft didn't really do a good job convincing anybody the Xbox One X is worth it. It just felt like a lot of that power is going underutilized, and I'm fine with my Xbox One S. Like, nothing I saw during the conference made me go, well, I can't do that on my current Xbox One. But if you're really that serious about 4K, I guess the X is cool, but for people like me who are fine with regular 720 and 1080p, they didn't do much to convince me, and it's obvious the Xbox One X is more so a luxury product that's marketed towards the die-hard fans. But Microsoft showed a ton of games with a fair amount of variety, which can't be said for other companies at the show. <laughs> Next up is Bethesda, also on Sunday, June 11th, and my... God did people hate this conference. It starts up with a montage of Bethesda employees and their families, which is nice. They then transition into the show, which is styled in the vein of 1950s advertising, and I dig it a lot, it's cute. And then they talk about a bunch of old stuff for 30 minutes. Doom, but in VR. Fallout 4, but in VR. Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind, which came out like a week ago. Creation Club, which is for old games like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, and everybody hated this, basically charging for mods. Elder Scrolls Legends Skyrim expansion. Card game, not really interested. Switch version of Skyrim, Zelda content, cool, motion controls, I mean sure, but the game wasn't made for that and nobody will play it like that. No release date, even though this is a port of a 6 year old game announced last October. No release date. Dishonored 2 DLC, cool, quick champions, alright, and then we finally get the major new announcements, Evil Within 2 and Wolfenstein 2. That's it. Overall, I didn't really hate this conference like others. I thought it was alright, it's just that they barely announced anything new. Really, only two big things were announced and they were at the very tail end of the conference. I think the reason I didn't hate this thing was because it was really quick and painless. And it also helps that I think the final two game announcements were pretty good. Alas, they didn't do a good job of letting us know what's to come in 2018, and next E3 they better bring out more new games and stop relying so heavily on six-year-old ones. Next, we have the winner of E3, Ubisoft. What has this world come to? No idea where this came from. Ubisoft time and time again has had a pretty mediocre conference, kind of due to the fact that a lot of their games were always revealed at other conferences. This year, their conference was on Monday, June 12th, and started off with a bang by revealing Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This was entirely leaked for a solid six years before the reveal, but it was nice to see it finally be confirmed. Miyamoto came up on stage and I thought this section dragged on a tad too long, but I'm okay with it. When you have Miyamoto at your press conference, I can understand milking it for as long as you can. The game itself looks fine. The gameplay didn't really click with me, but other people are genuinely excited for it. I'm not offended by the game. It looks quality enough. I just don't know if it's for me gameplay-wise. We then get a quick trailer for Assassin's Creed Origins, which is a game we saw at Microsoft, but they don't linger on it, which is nice. Next is a trailer for The Crew 2, which looked cool, with multiple vehicles racing at the same time. Color me intrigued. South Park for the 17th E3 in a row, some artsy VR game called Transference, a new IP, Skull and Bones, which looks really fun. Basically, Ubisoft is satiating the fans of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Good stuff, but it's a ways off. And what better game to show off next than Just Dance 2018? They don't linger on it, and it's here and gone in no time. Neat. A new South Park mobile game, Phone Destroyer. Alright. Next up is Ubisoft's Toys to Life game, Starlink. From what I understood, you don't have to use the toys, but if you want to, you can put together your own ship with whatever pieces you desire, and it will appear as that in the game, which is pretty cool. Some steep DLC, Far Cry 5 gameplay, which looked really, really good, and then ending it on Beyond Good and Evil 2, one of the most anticipated, long-awaited sequels of all time. Of course, it's weird because the characters swear like every two syllables in the trailer. I think they obviously looked into some marketing research and realized people don't care about talking monkeys if they ain't swearing. That was really weird and it felt a little too forced coming from the T-rated original, but hey, it's still Beyond Good and Evil 2. No gameplay and it's basically just now starting production, but it's cool that Ubisoft formally announced it this way. Yeah, so Ubisoft did really good. I liked how they didn't stay on things too long or try too hard to be funny. They let their developers be developers and show the games they made and then moved on to the next thing. It was surprisingly really well done and all the games shown off looked quality. The final traditional conference of them all is Sony, is also taking place on Monday, June 12th, later at night. I had a lot of concerns going into Sony's conference. They announced so many games at E3 2016, and most of those games still haven't released. Would we be looking at an E3 with little new content and mainly a rehash of last year? Yeah, pretty much. 
So at E3 2016, I thought Sony did great because of the style of press conference they went for. They started off with a live orchestra playing music that sounded straight out of God of War. Then gameplay started up and revealed that it was the new God of War. After that, non-stop, trailer after trailer, no bigwig coming out to explain what you just saw, just trailer after trailer of new game after new game. I loved it. Sony did a similar thing here, but take out all the excitement of new game announcements and replace them with games we already know about. Instead of a new God of War caliber announcement, the live music was playing for a story trailer of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Not as impactful, we already know about this game. I'm totally gonna pick it up, but it's more so a standalone expansion for Uncharted 4. It's not a huge, big, exciting way to start off a press conference. Next up was Horizon DLC, which, alright, cool. After that, a gameplay demo of Days Gone, which looks good, albeit a little too much like The Last of Us did well, let's make something like that. Still, it was announced last year and still no release window. Monster Hunter World, which is really cool. Many have complained it's simply westernizing Monster Hunter, but I've heard conflicting reports saying it's way more Monster Hunter than some skeptics say it is. Plus, it'll introduce the series to far more people here in North America, which is great. A from the ground up remake of Shadow of the Colossus. Awesome, this is how I want remakes to be. This looks like if Shadow of the Colossus was made in this generation and it looks beautiful. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Story Trailer, alright cool. Call of Duty World War 2, alright cool. PSVR, alright cool. God of War Trailer, nice to see some hack and slash elements in the game. I liked the demo from last year, but it felt like, let's make a Naughty Dog, rather than let's make a God of War. Nice to see the game bringing in some elements from the original series, and I like the release date, early 2018. Detroit Become Human. Whatever, I haven't really played any of Quantic Dream games, nor do I have much desire to, so I got nothing. Next up, Destiny 2 trailer, and then Sean Layden comes back on stage to close the conference, that's it? Well, we do get a gameplay demo of Spider-Man, and it looks amazing, but seriously, that's it? That was such an underwhelming press conference. It felt like Sony just tried to replicate what they did last year, but forgot to announce any new games. The only new game we got from Sony was a remake of a game that's already been remade, not to this extent, but still. And the trailers and gameplay demos they did show off didn't really reveal amazing new things. It felt more so like, here's more Days Gone, here's more God of War. The game shown off looked great for the most part, but I gotta say, if you watch Sony's 2016 conference, you don't really have a reason to watch this year's. Finally, we have Nintendo and their Nintendo Spotlight on Tuesday, June 13th. I had a lot to worry about going into this. At E3, I want the most games possible, surely meaning a runtime of around an hour is warranted for the conferences. The Nintendo Spotlight was said to be only 25 minutes and to have a major focus on 2017 games only. I was scared. I wanted to see brand new things and also new looks on games we already knew about. That 25 minute length meant we were either going to get mostly one or the other. Nintendo needs to start off strong, just get into the games, don't waste time on games that are coming out within the month like ARMS or something. Fuck. A short trailer plays showing off the multiplayer games on Switch coming soon, Soft revealing Rocket League on the system, which is perfect, that game will work so well on the system, that was awesome. Then Reggie talks for 20 minutes, and for the remaining 5 minutes we start off with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It looks really good, and while I'm not an RPG fan, I can appreciate this game, and it looks nice. Next up, an untitled Kirby game is revealed. It looks beautiful, but a little too generic for my liking. Looked a bit too similar to Return to Dreamland on the Wii. It does have some of its own ideas though, it brings back mixing abilities and has some fun co-op puzzles thrown in there. I'm gonna pick it up, but I wanna see this game garner its own identity soon. Then more talking about stuff that doesn't matter, Pokemon RPG title for the Switch is confirmed only via words, and Metroid Prime 4 is revealed only via a logo. Listen, these are amazing announcements and I'm excited to see what comes of them, but I would have liked to see at least some concept art or something from these games. Alas, these are two highly anticipated titles that are obviously very early in production, so just mentioning that they're in the works is enough, I guess. Yoshi! Looks weird. I like the world's art style, but why is Yoshi just a regular Yoshi? But he has a weird texture, like he's a plush or something, but doesn't look the part. I hope the Yoshi is just a tent model, and I think that's the case. Hopefully he's replaced with a paper craft version or something to go with the art style that would fit better. I like that it's a 2D platform where you can go forward and backwards, it reminds me of Bug on the Sega Saturn. The flip mechanic is neat and is used really creatively, I highly recommend watching the gameplay on Treehouse Live. Our style needs a bit of a tweaking, but overall, looks good. Next up is Fire Emblem Warriors. You see, I'm not a Fire Emblem guy and also didn't really get into Hyrule Warriors, so this game doesn't really interest me. However, I think it's really lame that they're only using characters from the latest entries in the series and the first few entries. Why not the entire series? That's just kind of a slap in the face to longtime fans. Zelda DLC is next and oh my 
god, we already know about this. They already detailed this online via screenshots, this just feels like padding. And they further detailed the second DLC pack, but barely, they just kind of vaguely show pictures of the champions and say that the pack is about them. They also revealed that the champions are getting their own amiibo, which is cool, I'm happy to see a Zelda character other than Link get an amiibo. Then more talking from Reggie, then games we already knew about. One of my least favorite things ever is the fact that they show off Rocket League like this is a huge reveal and I was squealing, you showed it in the intro, this is old news! So that's the Nintendo Spotlight at E3 2017 and there was really nothing that could possibly redeem it. <laughs> Nintendo wins! I feel like the 25 minute time limit was more of a detriment than an advantage. I understand that Nintendo wanted to quickly get through everything and whatnot, but it was more so stressful as a Nintendo fan. Knowing they only had 25 minutes made me hate when they would waste their time just talking to the camera or going over stuff we already knew. Kinda lame Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon were merely just stated to be coming to the Switch with nothing else, but hey I'll take the announcements and sleep well knowing Metroid is back and mainline Pokemon is finally coming to a home console. Mario Odyssey is literally everything the human race has built up to. I cannot say any more good things about that game. The capture mechanic of the hat took a mechanic that was already cool, you know, using the hat as a weapon and platform, and made it that much cooler. Overall, they had great announcements, but I wanted just a bit more of a better look at what 2018 will entail, and I hated the fact it was only 25 minutes. It was really stressful. So, overall, E3 2017 was pretty disappointing. There simply wasn't a ton of new stuff announced this year to really get me excited, it was mainly just showing off stuff we already knew was coming. Don't get me wrong, a lot of premium high quality games were shown off, but they were the same games shown off last year, or even the year before that, and in some cases, the year before that. Not every E3 is a winner, and this one wasn't bad, but pretty underwhelming. So overall, I give E3 2017 a- Excuse me, that must be my doctor, my results must be in. Yellow. Hey Scott, it's Dr. E. Bill here. Got your test results in and it seems you've been diagnosed with disappointment. Oh.